James Davis, and as you spell that, so we are a design group working with Zybex Lab. So Zybex Lab is performing computer size manufacturing using what's called the scanning color microscope. Um, other ba basic operation, excuse me. Um, so basically, you have a silicon sample that you place a voltage potential on. Um, you then bring a tip or probe close to it, and what we're going to measure is the tunneling current between the sample and the tip. This tunneling current is then amplified using what's called the transient means amplifier and <coughs> changed to a voltage. The voltage is fed into a data acquisition module where the, the signal is processed and a three-dimensional map of the surface is created. Zydex is also able to control the placement of individual atoms on the surface using this method. Um, so one drawback of this method is that it takes a long time to create anything substantial out of a few atoms. So Zyvex wants to increase the speed of the system by allowing a parallel tip to operate uh, at the same time. So that's where we came in. Zyvex wanted us to uh, design a custom, inexpensive transient beads amplifier. Um, but we've expanded on the goal. We've also uh, delivered to them a custom design for a data acquisition module. Uh, so James and I are working on the transient beads amplifier. Uh, there's a couple challenges here. The transient beads amplifier has to have a noise floor of about negative 90 dB. It also has to amplify the signal about 100 million volts per amp. It has to be sensitive enough to be able to detect sub-nanometer uh, distances. Um, so James and I successfully prototyped um, a transient amplifier. Zyvex was kind enough to let us uh, incorporate it into their system. And this is actually an image we obtained of it. The uh, width of the D there is about 5 nanometers. And uh, each of, you can't see it very well here, but each of the dots on there is a, a pair of two atoms. Um, come by our slide, I'll, I'll, uh, our poster afterward, and I'll, I'll show you some uh, better resolution pictures. Um, Daniel, Ellery, and Jesus were working on the data acquisition module. Their solution uses a ARM and DSP processor, as well as a uh, companion analog to digital and digital analog. The total solution uh, cost for the data acquisition module is about $700, and it has a unique feature that it transfers image processing from a PC, which has terrible latency due to a USB connection, to the ARM processor, which speeds up the image capture quite a bit. Um, so our project has brought Zyvex Labs one step closer to uh, performing parallel atomically precise manufacturing, and it reduced the control cost from around $10,000 to $1,000. I'd just like to thank John and Judy so much over at Zyvex for allowing us to uh, work with their system and for giving us so much of their time. Uh, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you. So did you actually move these atoms to make UPD spelled out? Um, so actually what happens is it's hydrogen passive in silicon 100. So the rows um, that you're seeing are actually hydrogen atoms on top. When you remove the hydrogen atoms, it kind of lights up there because um, what happens is there's that unfulfilled bomb and the tip running over it sees a lot of charge there. So that's why it's brighter. So we actually remove the hydrogen atoms to spell UTD using our transmitter. So you can move them using the microscope. Yes, the probe. Yes, that's correct. Right. Using a lithography current, which actually just the pull the hydrogen off. That's right. What kinds of currents are we talking about? Nano. Nano. It's yeah, hundreds of picoamps or nanoamps. And we amplify it. The gain is like said, around 100 million volts per. So you can really do it. <laughs> yeah. I saw pictures before. <laughs>
Okay. Um, so the main limiting factor is a capacitor, and the smallest one we could find that is a surface mount is 0.2 picofarads, and that gives us about a 2 kilohertz bandwidth. Um, using, like I said, the wire wrap or some other method to give a, a small capacitor <laughs> would give a much bigger bandwidth. A larger bandwidth was desirable, but um, uh, it was decided that the stability using a surface mount as opposed to like a wire wrap or some other method was, uh, that was more, it was uh, a bigger priority at the time. So, what are the uses of this other than writing IBM or you ready to do that? Where, where is this going? So, um, one application is DNA sequencing. If they can create an, an exact opening the right size, they can sequence DNA very, very quickly, uh, say a couple hours as, and, and a few thousand dollars as opposed to the you know, hundred, ten thousand, hundred thousand dollars and, and many hours it takes today. Um, another big issue is um, transistors. As they get smaller and smaller, the variation between transistors in the same battery I think, is, is getting larger and larger and having a bigger impact. So being able to create <coughs> transistors is another big, big thing to do. 